Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2021 Endeavor Communications Annual Meeting. Thank you for joining us today. I am Jim Ella, Chair or, or Board Chair from the Coatesville Exchange. For all present, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for the invocation. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll have Liz Cheatham give the invocation. Lord, we just pray that you would bless, bless us today, Lord. Bless our membership. Bless our board, our managers, our employees, our customers, vendors and associates, Lord. Just bless our hands as we, as we work, Lord. We look to you for our decision making. Any guidance, Lord. Lord, just give us direction in both our daily task and the future endeavors that we have for this company. Let us be a company of integrity, Lord, and let us be a company that stands for righteousness. Help us just to care more, more about our company, more about our colleagues, more about our customers. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Liz. The 2021 Endeavor Communications Annual Meeting is now called to order. I'd like to acknowledge the Endeavor Communications Board of Directors. Mount Marine Exchange, Devin Salzman, Vice Chair. Atlanta Exchange, Brad Henderson, Treasurer. Monrovia Exchange, Pamela Kibbett, Secretary. Cloverdale Exchange, Jim Smith. Emnets Exchange, Richard Rice, Poland Exchange, Doug Youngblood, Patricksburg Exchange, Jack Hauser, and Reelsville Exchange, Steve Aker. I would like to also introduce a president and chief executive officer of Endeavor Communications, Darren LaCourcier. Our guests include attorney Jeremy Fetty with Par Ritchie Law Office, Derek Lawson, CPA Auditor with Ide Bailey LLP. Ms. Secretary, will you please give the determination of a quorum and proof of mailing notices to hold of the annual meeting to the members. Mr. Chairman, the registered members have been counted and they meet the requirements of Article 2, Section 12 of the bylaws, which states that at least 50 members be present to form a quorum to conduct this meeting. We have 200 plus members at this time present. We do have a quorum. As stated in our bylaws in Article 2, Section 10, the proof of mailing of the 2021 annual meeting notice states that on April the 5th, 2021, the notice of the meeting was delivered to the United States Post Office in a sealed mailer addressed to the members as the names and addresses appear on their current records of the corporation. Postage was prepaid in accordance with the bylaws. Here is the letter that shows that the mailing was preceded. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. Now we will act on minutes of the 2020 annual meeting. The minutes are printed in the annual report, which was mailed to all members and a copy also posted on the website. I will now have the secretary read the 2020 annual minutes. Endeavor Communications annual minutes April the 24th, 2020. 
The annual meeting of the members of Clay County Rural Telephone Cooperative, Inc., doing business as Endeavor Communications, was held on April the 24th, 2020, via Zoom. The annual meeting began approximately at 4 p.m. The invocation was given by Endeavor Communications employee, Elizabeth Cheatham. James Ellett, chairman of the board of directors, then called the meeting to order and thanked the members for attending via Zoom. Chairman Ellett then introduced the board of directors, the president and the chief executive officer, and Derek Larson of I. Bailey LLP and Peter Kovacs, attorney. Secretary of the board, Pam Kivett, announced that there was a quorum of 109 members present. She also announced that a notice had been properly mailed to members according to the Endeavor's bylaws. Secretary Kivett then read the minutes of the April 13, 2019 annual meeting. Chairman Ellett then asked for a motion to approve the minutes of the 2019 annual meeting. The motion was made and seconded. The motion carried unanimously by a voice vote. Chairman Ellett introduced Derek Lawson of I. Bailey LLP to present the 2019 financial report. Mr. Larson discussed the financial statements, which were published in an annual meetings material and provided to the membership an overview of the financial condition of Endeavor. Secretary Kivett advised the members of the results of the Board of Directors elections as followed. Cloverdale Exchange, Jim Smith, unopposed. Patrick'sburg Exchange, Jack Hauser, unopposed. Poland Exchange, Doug Youngblood, unopposed. Chairman Ellett asked members to present old business. There was no old business presented. Chairman Ellett asked the members to present any new business and there was none received by the deadline provided by our bylaws. Chairman Ellett introduced Darren LeCourcier, the President and Chief Executive Officer. Mr. LeCourcier provided the membership with a report on the challenges and the opportunities confronting Endeavor over the last year into the future. He noted that the past month had been challenging for Endeavor and its employees. Mr. LeCourcier also recognized Endeavor employees for their contributions to Endeavor by identifying them by name. He noted that Endeavor's employees have kept in running through this difficult time and thanked them for their efforts. Chairman Ellett asked for the received, asked for and received a motion to adjourn the meeting. The motion to adjourn was seconded and passed by voice vote unanimously. The annual meeting was adjourned at 4.24 p.m. Now we will pause while we allow those at home to unmute their mics to participate. <laughs> Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the 2020 meeting? Do I have a motion to approve 2020 minutes as read? Yes. yes. I have a motion. Do I have a second to the motion? Second. Yes, second. I have a second to the motion to approve the 2020 minutes. Yeah. Yes. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay, and state your name. I says bye. Aaron Gary. Hoffman. I will now turn the meeting over to Derek Lawson of Ide Bailey to present the Physical Year Audit 2020 Financial Report. Thank you, Chairman Ellett. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. As Chairman Ellett mentioned, I am Derek Larson and I'm a partner with I. Bailey Accounting Firm. I. Bailey performed your annual audit, the annual audit of Endeavor Communications for the year ended September 30th of 2020. 
I Bailey issued an audit opinion on the cooperative's financial statements dated March 24th of 2021, stating that based on our audit procedures performed, it is our opinion that the financial statements of the cooperative are presented accurately in all material respects. The consolidated balance sheets and consolidated statements of operations included in your annual report and presented this evening were, were presented using the audited financial statements. As you can see, um, looking at the financial statements, your cooperative is in very solid financial condition. The balance sheet includes current assets of approximately $21.7 million and total assets of nearly $115 million as of September 30th of 2020. The assets of the cooperative increased significantly during the current period as a result primarily of the acquisition of a new technology company, Synergetics. The cooperative's financial obligations, including current liabilities of approximately 16.5 million and debt and other long-term liabilities of approximately 25.5 million as of September 30th of 2021. The equity of the cooperative increased approximately $3 million during the year to nearly $73 million as of September 30th of 2021. As you can see on the income statement, um, to, the right, to the right of the financial statements, um, your cooperative had a very good 2020 year. Total operating revenue increased from 27 million for fiscal year 2019 to 38.1 million in fiscal year 2020. A, a significant amount of the increase in revenue relates to the additional technology sales and services from the acquired company Synergetics. Operating expenses have increased as well um, as you know, relating to the acquisition um, and net margins after other income was approximately 4.1 million in fiscal year 2020. Thank you. And at this time, I will turn it back to uh, Chairman Ellett. Thank you, Mr. Larson. Ms. Secretary, will you please give the report of the election of a director? Yes. <clears throat> Director election notifications were mailed to three exchanges this year, one being Coatesville, Eminence, and Atlanta. They were mailed out on January the 18th, 2021. The results of the 2021 elections are as follows. In District 7, Coatesville, no election was held as James Ellett ran unopposed and was declared re-elected pursuant to the Article 3 Section 3.5A of the Cooperative Bylaws. In District Number 4, Eminence, no election was held as Richard Rice ran unopposed and was declared re-elected pursuant to Article 3, Section 3.5A of the Cooperative Bylaws. And in District 9, Atlanta, no election was held as Brad Henderson unopposed and was declared re-elected pursuant to the Article 3, Section 3.5A of the Cooperative Bylaws. Thank you, Ms. Secretary. Are there any unfinished business? As many of you know, through our written invitation to the annual meeting, all new business must be submitted in writing at least five calendar days prior to the annual meeting. We hope that this process will allow the board to address new business and more efficiently. I can report for this meeting, the board of directors has received a request for new business before the deadline. We have had a request from a member to address a few items. I would now like to ask Darren LeCourcier, president and chief executive officer to address these items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, these were some very good questions and, and uh, we'll try to go through them as the best we can. Uh, some of them may get fairly technical. Uh, there was a question on sending out uh, information prior to this meeting. And so we kind of look back at how we did our meetings prior to COVID. So in Endeavor Communications prior to COVID protocols would mail out an invitation to the members. And that 
included just an invitation. There was no minutes, no financials. Last year was our first year to mail out an invitation that did include financials. This year, as we sent out the mailer, uh, we only included the income statement and not the balance sheet. However, both were included and posted on our website for everyone's review. Uh, obviously, COVID changed up some protocols and, and how we provided information. Uh, we have not decided how next year we'll proceed. Um, however, if we do another virtual meeting for next year, uh, we will mail out income and balance sheet in our invitation, but they will also be posted uh, to the website. There was another question on financials and when we send them out and how often we send them out. Endeavor Communication uh, does not do quarterly financials. Um, we've always done an audited yearly financial. It is a thorough audit and it, it is true. And so we don't wanna publish anything that has not been audited. So as we continue, uh, the board will continue to provide a yearly uh, financial uh, at the annual meeting that is fully audited. There was another question uh, pertaining to Endeavor Communications and um, reserves and, and how we conduct our business. I would say that a rate of return organization like Endeavor Communications is probably one of the most complex systems that you'll experience. Um, so um, Endeavor Communications is regulated by the FCC. We are a rate of return regulated entity that is part of the FCC regulated universal high, high cost program. The Communications Act of 1934 combined the organized federal regulation of telephone, telegraph, and radio communication. This act created the Federal Communication Commission to oversee and regulate, how many times can you say regulate, <laughs> these industries. The act is updated periodically to add provisions governing new communications technologies, such as broadcast, cable, and satellite television. The Communications Act has been amended by many acts of Congress since 1934, most extensively by the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Many detrimental changes were made in the 2009 to 2013 on the high cost program and rate of return regulations. The initial program in 1934 ensures that rural telcos like Endeavor Communications has enough money to invest and operate rural telecommunications services. Initially, this was phone service, which now is primarily rural broadband. Other programs include rural health care, schools and libraries, and Lifeline. With that said, Endeavor Communications does not collect enough money from its members to cover all costs related to providing these services. Finally, the services that Endeavor Communication does provide are extremely competitive and superior to like services in Indiana and across the country. Many rural and city folks would love to shed their frontiers, their century links, AT&Ts and others for a product like Endeavor's. The rate of return regulation is what regulates Endeavor Communication. And again, we do not collect enough from our members to cover the cost to run a rural telephone company. So um, furthermore, Endeavor Communication uh, has taken steps to assure we are in existence for another 70 years as Politicians and non-elected officials at the FCC has been chipping away at the high cost universal program and rate of return. The rate of return has been reduced from 11.25% down to 9.75. Budget control mechanisms have further reduced our cost recovery. They have eliminated switching costs 
from the program, and some other costs, including the cost of conducting annual meetings. So it's an expensive um, ordeal to provide rural broadband and at the level that we do. Uh, the rate of return program is what makes Endeavor whole. The USF that you pay into is what makes rural broadband happen. So, and this is kind of addresses an issue that um, we should lower our prices. Uh, if we were uh, like a power uh, company and a rate base, then we'd have to charge the members what it costs to actually run this type of network. Uh, in that instance, uh, there probably would be no one that would take the broadband service. So to address further questions about uh, expenses and increase um, on our income statement, uh, our expenses have increased because we are investing in the future by expanding our broadband footprint, uh, partnering with Hendrix Power, and then trying to add as many customers as possible to keep long-term expenses down. We've also taken steps to diversify our income by investing in similar services such as hosted PBX, which is our Gigtel brand, also known as Voice over IP, and managed IT services, which is our Synergetics DCS brand, managed IT. These investments will increase our expenses initially but will taper off. However, they will increase revenues to make up for the reductions from the federal government USF program. Alternative solutions are raising prices to our members, which we are always trying to avoid. However, for the sake of TV services, it is a business that never makes money for the cooperative and the FCC has created an unfair playing field. There's also a service that causes many truck rolls and we encourage everyone to learn to stream and learn, learn to like a lot less TV. <clears throat> so just for a moment, let's take a look at our income statement. Uh, line two is what we received from the USF program. For 2020, that number is 12,432,746. From our members for internet and phone, we receive 8,000 or 8,129,861 combining lines one and three. If we were to remove the 12 million that we get from the FCC, federal government high cost program, Endeavor Communications is now losing money. We are working to make that $12 million number irrelevant but it will take time and investments. In summary, our member subscription to services do not cover our costs necessary to run and maintain our broadband network. The federal government knew this, and that is why rate of return and the universal high cost program. However, as the program has decreased its revenue to Endeavor Communication, we must take measures to make up for these losses and to ensure our members have the best option for rural broadband, which in Endeavor's case is the fastest in the state of Indiana, ranked third in the nation by broadband now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That concludes the new business for this meeting. I would like to ask Darren, oh, excuse me, I now would like to ask Darren, President and Chief Executive Officer, to address the membership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Usually I don't have to speak this much. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, very humbled to be here, uh, blessed and honored to serve this exceptional organization, its members and its employees. Finally, Endeavor Communications Board of Directors. I serve at the honor of the board and they are in tune with the needs of the cooperative and its members. 
They truly live one of our most important core values, caring deeply. Together with the members, employees, and elected board of directors, we make an exceptional organization. I need to thank our military, past and present, our first responders, our public servants. Let us always keep them in our prayers. Finally, I must always give thanks to God for giving me blessings to be with you and at this podium today. So the other day I ran into a quote um, that I seem to be stuck on that I wanted to share with everyone. And it was just, I'm still contemplating it. I hope everyone enjoys it. Kind of goes like this. If we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world by C.S. Lewis. I find it quite compelling and interesting. So I hope you all enjoy it. Wanted to recap uh, our membership and how we're doing there. So in 2016, we had 8,065 members. So looking to 2020, we're now sitting at 10,041 members. Since 2016, we've added 1,976 members. Most coming after we changed the bylaws to accept broadband only and getting the FCC to allow Endeavor Communications to offer broadband only. 64% of the membership is now on broadband only. It has increased our membership. Our broadband take rate is barely under the 70% mark now. We feel over the next several months, maybe next month, we'll hit 70%. Broadband customers added outside the membership territory in the last three years is 4,111 so far and, and counting. So just a financial recap, looking at the balance sheet for 2020, we made a jump from 74.9 million to 114.8 million. Much of that has to do with our efforts to diversify our revenue streams. We're expanding our like services to additional areas. Those include our internet service, Endeavor Communications, our voice over IP service, GigTel, and our managed IT service, Synergetics. A long-term debt, which has been negligible for many years, has increased with the additional managed IT assets that include Synergetics ECS. With that, we've seen a big jump in the income statement with revenues at 38.1 million versus 26.9 million. In kind, we see the similar jump in operating. The focus is growth for the future longev longevity of Endeavor Communications. The government is so very unpredictable, and we know that USF is a number that will continue to dwindle. We expect 2021 to be a very positive year for Endeavor Communications in our efforts to secure our future. We will continue to growth in the internet service, our GigTel, services and our Synergetics DCS, our managed IT services. However, we know that sometimes worldly events can cause stratospheric issues for organizations. With COVID, Endeavor Communications seen the demand for broadband increase. We also seen a large increase in funding for schools and technology and remote workers. So we are very blessed to have that problem. Next time, it could be drastic for Endeavor Communications. Concluding, Endeavor Communications is a great cooperative. Its employees that serve the membership are second to none. Each day, they humbly strive for excellence in serving our members. The cooperative is not just one person or a member, but a collection of many. It is our duty to serve the many and to ensure the cooperative survives. All the many pitfalls to serve the many for years to come. 
got to share a final little story. It's from a school teacher that works in our membership area, but lives just outside our area. So she contacted me a few months back in dire straits. Where to turn? This is her email to me on Monday of this week. It says, we have internet, three exclamations. All right. We just want to thank you so much for all your help in the process. I have to say process because it's another exclamation. You, your line guys, your salespeople, and Aaron the installer have all been amazing. So kind, so helpful, so professional. It's like Christmas in this house. Thank you. It's a true testament of this cooperative and its people and our core value of caring deeply. Endeavor offers more than just the internet connection. Our services impacts people's lives. So if we find ourselves with a desire that nothing in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, Darren. That concludes the informational items for this meeting and it's time to adjourn. We'll pause briefly to allow those at home to unmute their mics to participate. May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I have a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion. Yes. I have a motion and a second for the meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed aye. say aye and state your name. Motion carried. The meeting is now adjourned.